it's really cool to talk to you both today. The the film is fantastic. I love everything about it. Oh, wonderful. what was it like to work on? What what was it like getting into it? Mm. Can I just say I love Derek Luke? That's what it was like. It was fun. You know, he's a really, really interesting cat. And when he walked into rehearsals, I knew it was going to be interesting because he sat on the chair and was sort of just like this. <laughs> and then later on, he was like, so what do you think? And, you know, and it was like, hey. and I said, this is interesting. He's interesting. You know, and, and it, it was the whole time it was like that. It was, it was really lovely. The children were lovely. The young adults and even the baby and the and young Peyton, they were all good. Ali is fantastic. He's a really good, decent man. He asked this, and this is worth saying, that I think this um, film had been, they hadn't cast it yet, but it had been designed for two probably white families. And he mm -hmm. said, I want one to be black and I want them to be dark skinned. Mm -hmm. He wanted that dynamic. He wanted to see it. And I think it helps, although we don't talk about race in this film, it's in there. And I and I love that Zamani is dark and she's bodaciously, you know, built. You know, again, no one's talking about it. How she her womanhood is like right there, but she's mm -hmm. still daddy's baby. And she's like, why can't you save us? Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to be my dad. All these things are happening, and you couldn't do it with a better group of actors, and the crew was lovely too. Mm -hmm. So it was really wonderful. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> what about for you, Derek? What was the best part? The best part of what filming? Yeah, the whole thing, making it, working with this team. What what stood out for you? Uh, the chaos and the camaraderie. Mm. You know, um, you know, every everyone, you know, had a story, and you know, we're dealing with the whole social construct, and it seems like uh, the the care and the delicacy for life you know everyone was conscious of it you know and we didn't really i mean you do your homework but you know we were right in the middle of pandemic and we were you know uh shooting off sort of like a farm and uh dealing with sort of the ups and downs of new orleans weather and um you know, it was for me, the challenge was uh, for as a patriarch, sort of his line of defense was being quiet and thinking, being trying to be as strategic as possible because the stakes was high for his family survival. So, uh, you know, I love how, you know, some of the characters and the kids, they question his authority. They question his ability to be effective, but he's trying to figure out how to hold the family together, but also dealing with the alleged affairs <laughs> that um, that he had. And um, I love seeing the role switch. I mean, I, I played about the roles being reversed where, you know, Helen, uh, Helen, as a mom, a wife, she was forced, not just forced, but I think she was a force. I think she had to take the train in a different direction. And uh, I think that made our stories in interesting. I love what you say, that everyone has a really complete story. There's details about all of these characters. And at the same time, the relationships are troubled and conflicted and you guys work through it throughout the story um you know what was that relationship like to you guys in your heads when you're playing these characters because they hmm. they they are so connected and at the same time there's this you know challenge to overcome i guess it's a dance hmm. because there can be you can be injured you, you can injure somebody without without knowing and she's angry because she ha is having those issues and and I say she's in mourning because her youth is gone. And she thought she couldn't have a child and then suddenly this other child shows up, um, a baby, a new baby, but also she's adopted a child who's autistic and can't communicate with um, her um, and the family. So communication has stopped on a lot of ways. We're having trouble 
um, having conversations that would heal us, but it's also many of them are of our own making. She's decided to be angry and live in that for a while, probably because um, it feels better than forgiveness, you know, and you, and you could punish people. And sometimes if you can't get them back, avenging yourself means I will take away the thing that you most want. And that's access to me. You can't have it. But then suddenly you throw them into this bunker and this space and they need all of that. So they are unhealthy coming in there. And this is not the place to heal, but this is a place that they're going to have to figure some things out. And I, and I love that. Mm. But for you, Derek. Shoot, I get all raptured up when Erica talks. <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> well, what's Erica like as a scene partner? I mean, doing oh. this conflicted yeah, dance. That, you know. Derek, I can answer it too. <laughs> oh man. Bold. Uh artistic. Pushing the envelope. Um mining for truth and reality. Um, why she made a great Ellen and um, uh, questioning the power structures. <laughs> um, I love it. I think that um, for a long time, even though we're at the height in our industry, about six years ago, I was having a conversation with a representative and we were talking about a, a project I was pursuing. And they brought up the fact that, you know, uh, women uh, at that moment weren't leads, like, or she was brought up something. Um, and the truth of the matter is, is that I, I think with like Helen and Erica and even with Greg sharing the space is that I think excellence and greatness is a shared space. It's not a individual thing. And a lot of women have been sitting there in the sidelines for a very long time. Um, and uh, I'm excited. And I told her earlier in several interviews that I'm excited. I think she brought some great elements to her performances. And I haven't seen all of her work. I know a lot of her work, but um, I think what she did to the tribe that she really helped us. She brought something interesting. And why watch something that's not interesting? And she was interesting. And that's how it was working with her. Thank you, I appreciate it. That's beautiful, thank you. We'd... Derek is a caretaker. Uh, he looks after us. He doesn't think I see that, but I, I <laughs> notice that very much. He's a father in real life and he's a man. And he takes these roles very seriously in, in, the, in the classic traditional sense of it, which is lovely because often you can feel as an actor that the crew can be taking care of you, but you're hoping. That, and it wasn't a pretend thing for him. He really cared about us. He really cared about me. And he, and you could see it. He's a perfectionist, which um, I love because I try not to be. I try to push against my wanting to do that. It's nice to see somebody who has so much, um, I think, uh, invested so much in his, in the career, in the future, but also in the, in the piece itself, that he wants to be good. You know what I mean? And, yeah. that, and that it is good because he, he wants to do it. And it's not, he's not putting it on anybody else. It's on him. It's all in his, you know what I mean? And he's going he's gonna to do it and, and um with or without you, but he'd rather do it with you. And also he's generous, very generous person. And um, he's generous because he's kind and he's thoughtful. And um, we had some of our best talks, or I had some of my best talks on set off stage with Derek. You know, he's very curious. Um, he's, you can't put him in a box. I was surprised at some of the things he said, a little shocked. I was like, what the, but you know, it's all good, you know? <laughs> And, and he's one of the more, more sheltered actors I've ever seen because he doesn't look and sort of let pop culture tune him. He tunes himself. He's a self-tuning mechanism. I find that fascinating. I've never met anybody like him. And I had a really fantastic time. So thank you. 
I just learned a lot about myself. <laughs> well, you're a tuning fork, my friend. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, you're both amazing at it, and it's wonderful talking about it. Uh, I love the vibe. Uh, you know, you're you're both tremendous. Uh, I, I'm going to aim this a little more at Erica uh, because I'm just curious if you had the same feeling. Although, Derek, you can answer this too. I mean, I don't know if I'm reaching, but there's this idea in the film that feels like that the women are creators and the men are the destroyers. Mm. And I love the fact that we see both of the women are, you know, there's this whole child rearing. There, There's just creation. There's a lot of the positive vibes are coming from the women sometimes mm. and the men have some of the destructive tendencies. And I'm curious if that's something you both saw in the film. Wow. I saw it. Go ahead, dear. I saw it. I saw it. You're right. You're the first one to say it like that. Go ahead, dear. So my answer is, can you define destroyer? Okay. That is a tough. Yeah. I mean, the only, I think violence comes to mind as one of the key things I think of as one thing, but the other thing is even just the relationships, the, maybe the emotions. I mean, that's what I took from it, but I'm, I'm curious what you guys, if, if I'm, <laughs> you know, climbing up the wrong tree or if I'm on something, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. And feel I, free I to say you, if think, you disagree, I'd love no, to hear. No, no, no. I think, I think that you're on to something. I, I, if I do have a pushback, is the pushback is, comes from the legacy of, of fractured families. And that from, the, from fractured families and the position of the man and the wife and or the woman and the man um and how we define them and so i think that uh it's rare where i hear a balance of structure and how you harness the power of both um i value uh my wife um and many times i realize that I could value her more that um, we balance each other out. And I realized that she's really strong and she can do a lot with me, but she can do a lot without me. And so, um, but in the take of the family structure, that's why I asked for you to define destroyer because I would like to say I'm a cinematic gatekeeper of the family because I want to see people see it work. Complex, but work. So that's why I asked you that question. Mm. Um, I think it's very interesting. I love the question. <laughs> and I think that it's meant to be, one of these things that happens in this film is that it starts to fall into the sort of traditional ways we see man, women, world, you know, survival. It wants to, you to just say, what if you were here and this happened? And you don't have all this other stuff that you can fall back on. It gets very primitive, very fast, right? Mm -hmm. All these sort of things, the stereotypes pop up. I'm the woman, he's the man, protect us. Stuff like that. That dynamic is very difficult in a modern society because you're dealing with a woman who's ed a doctor and she is used to running things and having her own practice and being in charge. You're talking about a man who's a professor. That means he spent a lot of time investing in himself, in his brain, and he's, his value is not on his back, it's inside of his head. And um, that's not valued when a man with a gun, who Sam's playing, said, I don't care what y'all have, I have this gun, and I have this bunker with all the stuff in it, and you need me. You didn't need me up there, but here you need me. And that's power. So all these power dynamics are being played. And I like that you use the word destroyer because I have to go back to this thing that I was in, it was called the Mahabharata. And one of the things that happened in the Mahabharata it tells the story of mankind from start to finish. And Shiva the destroyer is in there. 
And he says, I've come to destroy the destroyers. And I always loved that phrase because I thought I had been born into this world to destroy the destroyers. Like I wanted to be a tool of disruption. He says, Derek says, I wanna protect the family. But in order to protect it, he has to disrupt it saying, I'm not gonna take those roles that do that. I'm taking these. So I'm going to interrupt that process because I think the family unit is precious and sacred. And we have to start to know that these types of um, stories can tear those things down. So I like to have this conversation. And more importantly, when people say that women are too volatile to be leaders, I always laugh at that because mm -hmm. we didn't start all these wars. Men did. Um, all these things that happen in the street, men are doing. And you go and you give money to villages, to women. They don't buy weapons. They don't poop, make defense departments. They um, build schools. Hmm. They um, uh, figure out um, how to take care of people. And that's what happened after a while. They stopped giving to countries that were failing indiscriminately. They started to say, let's be more intentional. And they started giving it to the women. And then the country started to thrive. If you gave it to a potentate, they would buy more Cadillacs and furs and all these things to show off how big and strong they were. As opposed to women were like, no, I'm good. I need a stove. I needed this. My child needs shoes. They were creating spaces that they could thrive. So I think that men are unfortunately been told a story that they are not the natural creators. So then there they enact destruction, they enact hostility. But I think if we start giving mothers and women the money, they'll raise young women, young men and women to see their place as people who plant seeds, nurture, mm -hmm. and give, as opposed to people who tear up crops, take, and then, you know, make you suffer for it or put you under their thumb, which is really difficult. Can so I say something to that? In. That's what we're in see, right now. See, anyway, go ahead. And see, you said something that was like powerful. And I think, you know, as you are blessed to get older uh, and you find more about your assignment, um, this word nurturer is a new word for me because I've never heard that word growing up. But I found out that's exactly what a husband is supposed to do. Mm. And so when you grow up, and you have a description, but that description never actually hits home for you. And to me, destroyer means someone that doesn't realize the potential of another and never pours into that. Mm -hmm. You destroy it. So that quote that this guy, Miles Monroe says, he says, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Mm -hmm. So it's inevitable to destroy something that you don't know much about. And so relationships, um, especially for women I'm learning, you, you have to become a master nurturer. Mm. And I didn't grow up in a farming agricultural mentality. Um, you grew up more in a hunter taker. So, um, it's rare where I see couples, but I see them where I, first thing I look at the woman, I'm like, wow, she's being nurtured. Ooh. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's deep. And when you think <laughs> about it, Derek, wouldn't that be that you're going back to your roots? Because we were brought here from Africa, partly for our farming abilities. We were known farmers. We were master farmers. We are actually in these cities away from our true purpose in those ways. Because if mm. we were in Africa, we would have been doing more of that. That's the truth mm. of the fact. Wow. I know you ain't asked for it, but you just... You just got... What? Did we lay it down on you, Andrew? You did. What? And I love every minute of it. Thank you both so much. I really appreciate the conversation and everything. Thank, Thank you very you much. Ask questions. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful you. day. Happy holidays. Right. Yes. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah.